Hello one and all, Pipes here, checking in with development video number 5 of the abandoned cinema scene stroke 80 street scene that I'm creating currently in the Unreal Engine 4. Now in video number 4 we were looking at the concept art for the interior of the pub also so we could look at the different lighting schemes we can look at and the different colours and uh, the treatment for it and since then I've had a few questions asking me what's my approach going to be for texturing up all these modular assets. Now because you're going to be using a physical based lighting system uh, I wanted to see what applications were available to aid in the creation process using the physical based shading scheme. So after a little research I found out that the Quixel, Mega, uh, Quixel suite is coming out soon with mega scans uh, but that's not available as yet to the general public but what is available in a program that's been around a while is Substance Designer and the new Substance Painter so, seeing as I'm moving away from the, the old way of texturing everything, uh, mainly in Photoshop and looking at doing a lot of high poly stuff in ZBrush, I thought I'd give Substance Designer a try and see what the Substance Painter is like as well. Now, what I've done is I've gone into the, the block out scene and just picked an asset at random, one of the modular pieces, and uh, looked at texturing this up first, which will be, you can just see on the side of the picture there, it's the booth partitions where the seats go. So I brought those into their own scene, and here you can see them in Maya. Um, this is, um, if you imagine the layout of the pub, as you were looking at that concept, there'd be an L-shaped seat, mirrored L-shaped seat there, and also another L-shaped seat there. So we've got these three partitions and that one just to demonstrate where the seat would go. Now this one is in a 000 world space and this is the one that I unwrapped. So if we look in the UV editor, um, you can see what I've done is for each of these pillars, I've just unwrapped one and then duplicated them. So they're all stacked on top of each other but rotated them. So in effect I've got a modular piece inside a modular piece. Same with these brass spheres. So you can see that brass sphere is unwrapped there and it's also unwrapped in exactly the same place. Now the layout for the texture will be um, varnished oak wood up to this point and then this top portion here will be brass for the top of here. So I do have a, a bit of extra space but I also want to add in some frosted glass in, into these spaces uh, I'll just minimize this, into these spaces here. So if uh, texel density allows me, I'll try and fit the uh, windows into there as well. Now when it comes to the actual main sides of the booth, um, we've got these separate um, pieces here which are overlaid on top, which just give that a design. On this side, it's pretty much blank because that's where the seats will go and the seats will be quite high. Now, the the main panels themselves, this part here that I've highlighted, is a technique that I found on The Last of Us that Naughty Dog uses and quite a few other studios is where to get the most out of your texture space that you've got is you just uh, unwrap the, the front portion of this, mirror it and attach it together. So you'll get slight fish eye down this seam here, sort of like a symmetrical mirror uh, effect. But because you're only looking at it from one side at a time, then you can use the same texture on this side as that. So that's why we're getting more space out of the texture. Um, and like I say, you, you hardly ever notice it. I mean, in The Last of Us, the only reason I've seen it is because I've looked closely at how they've done the texturing. So from there, I then went into Photoshop and just from CG Textures just got a base, a base wood and ensured that the luminance values were correct uh, from a chart that I'd acquired from a fellow artist, um, Ryan Benno. And... And from there, I also just uh, got the luminance values for the brass, so now, and I brought those into Substance Designer, which is here. So, the way that I've set this up is I've got a Material Masters uh, package, and in, within that package I've got graphs, and also the textures that I created in Photoshop. So, for example, the reason a lot of um, top-end companies at the moment are using Substance Designer and this sort of method is because once I've created this wood oak I can then use this shader setup 
onto other modular assets and I can just apply that straight over the top without having to remake it all the time in Photoshop. Same as with the brass. If I bring up the brass, you can see that's the luminance for the brass. You can see in this window here, which is, um, and then I've just overlaid some detail oh, very subtly from uh, CG textures. Use the blend node here to blend that together. Use the levels to level it out. And then a use saturation levels node, because it's all just node based. If you press spacebar, these are all the nodes that you can bring in and then use these noodles or wires to attach them to your outputs. So the, out, the, the final output there, that would be the brass output with the roughness metal metallic obviously it's it's metal so it's white and a normal if required um and this blend node here is just blending in via a multiply like you would in photoshop with adjustment layers so there we have the brass so whenever i've got another modular asset and i want to uh, add brass to it I can just use the shader and I know that it's correct in all lighting because I've followed the chart that that Ryan passed to myself. And the wood oak there, another thing that you can do is you can also expose parameters. What that means is um, when I'm actually bringing this and compositing it together with other materials, I might want to, instead of having to go back to this and then change the levels, I can right click on the levels and expose parameters and I want to expose the mid level so I can just change that when required as you can see there it's now got a red dot and I can't move that in here but I can move that in another graph which I'll show you in a second. Again uh, this wood it's not metal so it's pure black and there's not really much detail going on because I just want these to be base correct luminance um, textures that I can use across the entire project. As you can see, that'll speed things up. So then what I did is create a new package just for the booth. I brought in the booth itself uh, as an FBX. Now you can see it. And there you can see it with the brass shader from this um, Material Masters on the top and the oak wood on the bottom. And the way that you do that is to create an SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic. So we create another graph here. This would be the output for the booth partition, for this partition. So let me just break it down. It looks a bit crazy at the minute, but it's, it's quite simple. In fact, this is one of the most simpler ones, because I'm still learning it as well. So here we have that, that shader, that wood oak that's going into there. I'm doing a transformation 2D which allows me to, as you can see now, I can rotate and scale using the widgets there it will rotate the actual texture. I've created another scalable uh, vector graphic which is, you just press the space bar and SVG from new resource and I'm using this as a mask because when you go in here you can actually create masks and I can select them and that, what I'm doing is I'm actually transforming the direction of the wood for the for the pillars and also for the um, booth itself. I could do this in Photoshop but then again I'd need to create a brand new texture for that where with this I can just use that original one texture from the wooden oak. And then going into here and blending this together with the original giving it a hue saturation levels just to darken it a bit for the luminance value for this and then I'm plugging this in to this uh, multi-material blend. What the multi-material blend does is I've created a color mask by painting yellow, this one pure yellow color in Photoshop over the UV where I want the brass and this orange color over where I want to place the wood on this model. So this mask is bespoke to this model. So all I have to do is plug that into the color mask slot create this multi-material blend because I've got the brass going in as well as the uh, wooden oak varnish material so I've got the two materials going in if I press 3 on the keyboard I can make this more a compact view so that when I plug that into there it'll plug all the roughness metal and normal and albedo straight in without having to do each one separately so they're running into there um, and then coming out of there uh, so sorry. So once it goes into this multi-material blend, you then tell it where you want that brass to appear on the model and where you want the wood. So if I click on here, you'll get the the parameters here. 
there's two materials, but it's only showing material two because the base material that's plugged into this slot would originally be everywhere on the model. And then we are just telling it that we want, out of this color mask, we want that yellow to be the brass. So we go into the multi-material, we select material two, select the color. The best way to do this is click the mask, double click on the mask so it comes up in the bitmap, click once on the multi-material, click once on here, go to pick, and then just pick the colour, and then that, see, I've, I've actually picked a different colour, so it's it's took away that actual brass, if I click it again, brings the brass back, because it knows that that colour is assigned to that part on the colour mask, I hope that makes sense, and then this was a bit of a learning curve for me, I just thought I'd try putting on some light dirt variation, just into the entire material using the material color blend. So if I just press 2 to expand this, you can see from this output here, we could have just exported that out and then we've got as maps, but I just wanted to try adding in the multi-material color blend, and this is where you can start adding in variations and edge dirt and scratches um, procedurally within Substance Designer. But I wanted to look at Substance Painter, so I decided that I'd just have a, a, a light go at doing some light dirt variation so I've got a mask there I've got dirt going into there that's blending multiplying I've added just a dust layer you can input ambient occlusion and will space normals but I'm just applying it um, just completely over the model very subtle transform 2d just to uh, scale it outwards a little bit just to make it a bit larger on the model and then that's going into this blend uh, multi-material color blend into the grayscale mask and in turn the comes out and that's the final textures so if I wanted to just change something quickly it's not a problem remember when we had that use saturation and levels well if I go back to that wooden oak you can see when I expose that level levels command you can see I can get access to it here if I want to change the actual roughness of the wood itself um, so it's just such a it, it, once all these materials are created it's just the quickest way to do the base texturing obviously then you can either do the procedural texturing in here where you can add on your edge scratches via uh, the normal map and the ambient occlusion but what I decided to do was just skip um, skip um, using ZBrush and see what the Substance Painter is like for actually painting on details and scratches and everything on this modular object. Now, ZBrush still is one of the greatest programs of all time for 3D and I'm not saying don't use it, but it, when I show you this Substance Painter it's just um, fantastic if I just click it here. So this is the model that I've from Maya, and you can see I've brought in the maps. Um, let me see if I just show you the color. These are the that so that's the UV layout. This is the 2D texture, and that's it as 3D. That's just the diffuse or albedo on its own. And you can see where the transforms were and where the woods go in different ways from Substance Designer. And here we've got the brass. Um, for mip mapping, it would be a good idea once this is exported out, just go and put like a brownish color behind there. So if you do zoom out in the scene, you don't get black lines. Same with the brass, just to cover in these details here. Um, and as you can see, it's doing everything for me. That's the height, roughness, metallic. Now the metallic, I need to go in and paint out these because this should be pure black because it is just wood. So I've accidentally painted over. But this is where it, it comes into its own because if I press M and I go back to material, I press C there and that cycles through the actual um, maps themselves. If I press M, it brings us back to our multi-material. So as you can see, even just that basic texture in the physical base lighting looks pretty good it looks it looks pretty pretty realistic because you're using correct luminance values and what you can do from there is I imported in all the textures and I created a fill layer which is that icon there I'll put a link to the tutorial for this because this is still in uh, in beta so it, it is a little buggy it does crash every now and again so saving frequently is advised um, what you can do is you can paint on each channel together. So if we look at this drop down, we've got the diffuse height, roughness, and metallic. We can paint 
on each one of those at the same time. And this is where in ZBrush you go in and scratch the edges and, and do all that, then bring it into uh, another program and do all the texturing. What we can do here, we can just do it on the fly and change everything at once. Yeah, organic, like I say, organic type of models, I'd still use ZBrush, but for something like this, you, you just want quick edges scratching and changing the roughness on on parts of the model this this tool is just amazing so we've created a fill layer and I've just brought in that texture which had the brass and the wood from substance designer and then if you right click you can add a mask a white or a black mask or your own bitmap and then once you paint in this mask if you click on there you can start painting in this mask so what I've done is I've created another texture which is rough wood underneath and that's also got a height map there which is plugged into it to give it the the normal variation and it's got its own specular map as well um as you can see it's not specular sorry the roughness map so it's quite bright because we if it's black it's quite very shiny if it's white it's very rough so obviously this is rough wood so it'd be quite white so we've brought those in so once i click on this top layer here and say i grab this this dirt um, brush here hold down control and pull on the right mouse button you can scale this down and as you can see we've got some rings where the drinks have been but what we can do on this mask I want to show the rough wood underneath so if we bring this down to a darkish color and start painting as you can see I'm starting to get that variation from the wood underneath and and you're also getting the bumps and and ruffles and you can even go into the the wood and rough layer and just paint out those height maps if you just want it to be flat without having the bumps and ruffles in there and you can see I've gone across the entire model on the edges just applying very slightly all these kind of dints and knocks and down here as well and here's a really good brush that you can use if I go back to this mask in here and I'll, I'll show it exaggerated. If we go to a particle brush and use the burn particle, watch this. So say I've got the bottom here, I can just go across and it's almost like there's dirt and it's following the contours. And But obviously it's quite heavy that, so you wouldn't, you'd do it on a lighter color for the mask. This is what I've been experimenting with yesterday. And as we go across, a little lighter you can just quite see it. Let me just try a bit. Try it again. It's kind of like magic. And it follows the contours of the actual mesh and it will follow the contours of the normals as well. Um, if you look at this down here, there, there's a slot that says um, follow the following normals. But I, because there's no normals on this um, layer, on this varnished wood, It'd show that on the on the wooden roughly. It's just a slider that you that you move up and then it'll start following the contours of the actual normal as well. So what I've done is I've gone in and created some more layers. So I've got some screws that I've just painted in. It's done the height, the roughness, and I didn't paint any diffuse, so it's just that metal. I've also added some dints into the into the brass and I mean that's a really you can really see how that wood is bubbling up there like it's quite old and we can take take that back down if we want make sure we're in the correct layer and even using that burn particle we can start taking it off or we can use one of these dirt masks turn down its flow if you're using a Wacom tablet you can also um, you can also use pressure sensitivity and as you can see as I'm going in there I'm starting to just taper that back a bit, bring the flow right up, and then I can bring it all the way back down. So it's in the, in effect, it's what you've been doing in ZBrush, and then you'll be baking this out. But we're getting the benefit of we 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 can see real time in a physical based lighting environment how it's going to look in Unreal Engine 4 and in the final piece. So it's saving so much time. And obviously you wouldn't have all that, so I'm just going in with a, the dirt brush and making sure I've got white, because I want to bring back the varnish wood on that mask there, and just bringing it back. And this, I painted this this morning, and it must have took about 
half an hour to an hour to just get it to the point that I wanted. Again, we've got some dulling brass, and all that's doing is on the dulling brass one is the diffuse. I've disabled painting on the diffuse, same as the height, that's disabled as well, but the roughness, that's just normal. So if I go in, let me try and get a good point from here. If I go in with quite a dark brush, that makes it more shiny in the roughness. You'll start to get, as you can see, just a little more. What I've done is uh, there's also an opacity layer here. If you just click the number, I think I can bring it up. So just for educational purposes, if I bring that up, you can see there's a lot more shiny. So what I've done, use this for, is like stains on on here where the uh, beer glasses have been. So you can see kind of like the stain there and there. Uh, so it's just an an awesome awesome program, and you know that all all your materials that you eventually export and put into the Unreal Engine are gonna work fine. They they're gonna look like this, and that's something I'm yet to actually finish and put into because I've just been doing this this morning. But I really wanted to show you what my texturing procedure will be. I'll still be using ZBrush, and I'll can still tweak stuff in Photoshop, but I've got this option as well here to get some real time texturing and we can also change the different environments so this is like a panorama environment if we look here there's the viewer settings if I, I can grab this panorama or image even and then we can see it in different lighting conditions so this is a bit more brighter with less shadows but you can really see that it really works I mean that that might be a bit too much damage not a problem go back to varnish wood get the diffuse, bring it up to white, just paint it out, not a problem. And we're doing it real time. If you imagine doing this in ZBrush, I'd have created all those kind of surface noises within uh, perhaps, well, surface noise, or using an alpha, baking it out and everything, but with this, I'm getting real time. And it, it, I just think it speeds things up immensely, it's just great. I mean, yeah, it's a bit buggy at the moment, keep saving as often as you can, because if not, you might find that it crashes a lot but there's a lot to experiment here and there's a lot of things that we can really make the textures look absolutely awesome there you go you can see where the sticky beer has been left on the side and that's all just done in the roughness again put some scratches just in the roughness perhaps make them really rough so that the contrast with the the varnished oak which would be great um yeah so just before i go let's try a couple more of these so there's airport let's try it in the overcast environment still looks quite nice and like I say on the brass I also did a roughness pass just to dull it, dull it off and that was again just, just using the, the roughness channel painting in the roughness but using uh, a white and then just bringing it down and there, that way it looks like people have held on to the brass or grabbed it and it's, as you can see there it's just a bit less shiny I can bring that down that might also have been yeah, there we go, look. So I can either make that shiny or not as shiny. It's just absolutely brilliant. I, I can't recommend it enough, really. Uh, this is definitely a way forward. I mean, you can you don't even have to bring in the maps. You could create a substance package and publish it. So you could finish, you could publish that substance and then just import it straight into here. And it, like you, can, you can make these paint materials and you can use it that way. Um, I, the way that I, I've just done it is just by extracting the textures and then just plugging them in to such as this varnish wood and all you do is just grab the texture that you've imported and just drag it across onto into there and it compiles it for you and the final one studio put that into the environment this is like a really strong studio lighting environment you can turn down the exposure a little bit if you wish but here you can really see this is in like super super lit shiny studio but all the textures in in my opinion do look correct in all the different lighting environments and that's what physical based um, rendering and lighting is all about instead of eyeballing it for each separate scene you just create in these base textures using them and they should look spot on in every lighting environment and that means the games are going to look better and the games are going to be created quicker because once this library is done most of the time then is just spent uh, modeling and unwrapping it um, so yeah so that's 
one of the modular assets, so that's like a first pass, so I might go in and add some more things, perhaps a few scratches and whatnot, and putting the glass into those um, holes there. But apart from that, I can't recommend Substance Designer enough. Um, Substance Painter, absolutely awesome. And I've just done that within half an hour to an hour. Because you've got your base materials, it's just a case of going in here um, and then just adding in the surface details and cracks that you need whilst working on every map at the same time. Whereas before, uh, um, I'd be going into Photoshop, layering this out, going into the Z brush, painting in the damage, going into X normal, baking that out, bringing those in. I mean, you can still uh, use Z brush with this, uh, and also obviously with Substance Designer 4 for uh, for using effects such as um, baking out curvature maps, ambient occlusion, for using the procedural effects. But for me, Substance Painter is definitely a time saver and uh, a way forward. So if you've got any questions or queries, um, obviously just put them in the comments. It would be awesome if you could subscribe to me if you've followed me this far. And I'll put in some links as well to more uh, tutorials. I think the guy's called Wes at Algorithmic. He's awesome. He's done some great stuff. And he, he does kind of like a, um, a, like a war tank, like a futuristic tank. Um, and he said it took him about two weeks to model it and unwrap it, but it only took him a morning to actually texture it all. That's the power of substance uh, designer and no base texturing. And this painter is like the cherry on the top. So um, my portfolio is at www.rpiper.co.uk. Uh, find me on LinkedIn or Facebook. I'll be happy to answer any questions. And uh, I'll be looking at video number six very soon. Um, that will probably be texturing up some more assets and more I get into this and obviously the node based texturing um, sharing with you any techniques that I pick up along the way and if you've got any techniques or anything please put them in the comments that would be absolutely awesome well it's been a bit of a long video but thank you so much guys for sticking with me and um, I'll see you in video number 6 thank you, goodbye <laughs>